I'm Calvin Liz with a wedding photographer and bridal boutique owner based in San Diego. And today I'm gonna to be talking about grand entrances and grand exits at weddings. So first off, I want to define what a grand entrance and a grand exit is. A grand entrance is when the couple at the wedding introduces themselves or gets introduced into the cocktail hour space or the reception space more commonly the reception space, but they are formally introduced. It's basically a big production. They walk into the wedding space and all of the guests have all their eyes on them. And then the grand exit is when you are leaving a space and everybody is watching you leave a space by yourselves. And so I'll talk about that one a little bit later, but first we're going to be talking about grand entrances. And so basically that is when you are entering the space, usually the reception space, but sometimes the cocktail space, you are introduced into the space. Now who enters? Usually it is always the couple, but sometimes it can also be the wedding party and very rarely the family can also be introduced into the space as well. So at a lot of my weddings, I would say it's just the couple, but also I do get a decent amount of weddings where the wedding party, so the bridesmaids and the groomsmen are also introduced into the reception space. I would say very rarely do I have a formal grand entrance into the cocktail hour space. Usually the couple, if they're joining cocktail hour, just walks in casually unannounced and they just join cocktail hour and then they go into the reception space so yes you can still have a formal grand entrance into the reception space if you were there at cocktail hour it doesn't matter if you are, were already seen by your guest at cocktail hour you can still have a formal grand entrance that is totally okay but if you are doing a um, wedding party entrance into the reception space you are going to have all members of your wedding party introduced. So for that, I would say if you've got a shy wedding party, do not make them do this. If they have social anxiety and they don't want to be introduced, don't force them to do it. I know I always say you do you, do your wedding your way, but at the same time, if you have really crippling social anxiety um, wedding party members, don't make them do this because it can be really, really hard for people to have all eyes on them, having to walk into this space, because here's what happens during these events. Um, when you are doing your grand entrance, you can just do it where you walk in and you simply just walk onto the dance floor or walk onto your seat. Or what you can do is you can do a little dance. A lot of people do a little dance into the grand entrance. So oftentimes the wedding party is sort of expected to do a little dance and it can be really hard coming up with what kind of dance you're going to do. And so it can be really social anxiety inducing. I know for me, my name, my first name and my last name are really hard for the DJ or the band to pronounce. So they almost always get it wrong at weddings and it's really embarrassing for me and I really hate it. So I don't don't mind doing it if I have to, but just keep that in mind. If you have a group that's really not going to like it, maybe just skip that and just have you and your fiance are actually at that point in time, they're actually your spouse. So you and your spouse do it. You can just do the two of you instead of you and your wedding party, or you can do your wedding party, so whatever you want to do, do it. But I'm just bringing that up just in case. So you can have you and your wedding party walk in. So your wedding party would go first if you're doing your wedding party and what you can have them do if you're going straight into your first dance, you can have them go onto the dance floor and they stay on the dance floor and kind of hype you up and they stay on the dance floor all around you while you do your first dance or maybe they stay on the dance floor, you come onto the dance floor, then they take their seats and you do your first dance. Sometimes I've seen it where they make like a line and you run through the line and it's really fun. You can do all sorts of things with your grand entrance with your wedding party. They can just really be your hype man. Um, so they can stay on the dance floor, you do your first dance. And then since they're already on the dance floor, then they come on the dance floor, then everybody's dancing. You invite all of your guests to do a little um, group dance before everybody sits down and has maybe a welcome toast or something like that. And then everybody eats. So there's really all sorts of options that you have for your grand entrance and ways that you can format it and transition into a group dance, a first dance, um, or something like that. Or you can keep it really simple and just have your grand entrance, you walking on um, into the room, taking your seat immediately and just getting straight down to business into dinner a toast or something like that you can keep it very very simple 
Now, what if you're like, Kevin, I hate the idea of a grand entrance and I really don't wanna be put on display any more than I had to. I already had to walk down the aisle and that was enough for me. You can skip it. You can absolutely skip your grand entrance. You do not have to do one whatsoever. There are plenty of people out in this world who don't do a grand entrance and they simply just walk right in with their guests when the reception starts and they take their seats and the reception events unfold as normal. So you don't have to do one. If you do not wanna be put on display, you don't like the idea of one, you don't wanna do it to your wedding party, you don't wanna do it for yourselves, don't do one. That's totally fine. People aren't gonna miss it. It's not gonna be a big deal. I don't think anybody will care. Do what you wanna do. It's your wedding, your day. Go for it, okay? So that is the grand entrance. I think I've covered just about everything, but if you guys have any questions about it, leave it down in the comments. And now we will move on to the grand exit. So there are really two sort of places in the wedding day where you might be doing a grand exit. The first place makes sense if you are having your ceremony at a completely different place than your reception. So where you are leaving maybe a church or something like that and then getting into a car that is then shuttling you to a reception space. So maybe you want to do some sort of grand exit out of your ceremony space where everybody has bubbles or rice or something like that and then you go into your car and then you get transferred over to your reception space. So you could do a sort of little mini grand exit from that and that could be really cute. I just did one recently for a couple. They had bubbles outside of the church and then we moved over to the reception space so you could do a grand exit then but I would say that the more commonly known grand exit is at the very end of the reception at the end of the night where all of the guests gather they make a line on either side or the pathway for you to run or walk down towards your getaway vehicle it could just be the same bus that you're getting on with everybody else at the end of the night but oftentimes it's a car, it could even be an Uber or a Lyft. Whatever you are getting into, everybody is going to make a pathway. There could be sparklers, there could be bubbles, there could be rice, whatever is safe and allowed at your venue. California is very strict. They don't allow a lot of things here in California, so it could just be glow sticks here in California, whatever your venue allows. And so everybody's gonna line up and then you are going to run down. But my tip for you, if you have a photographer documenting this, is don't run too too fast because if you go way too fast your photographer is not going to have a lot of time to capture pictures of you like if you're sprinting down there there's not going to be a lot of great pictures for that because you're just not going to have a lot of time to capture you sprinting like the camera can only focus so fast especially in pitch black darkness so don't run too fast and then my other tip for you is to kiss at the end of the aisle so kiss at the end of the aisle to give your photographer a really cute picture to capture at the end of your little getaway so that's gonna be a really cute picture for you to have so that is a grand exit now do you have to do this no absolutely not but it could be a really cute picture if your photographer is staying until the end of the night these are definitely uh, rooted in tradition something really fun to do and it's definitely a cute idea but that is a grand entrance and a grand exit now like i said you don't have to do either of these you can do whatever works for you for your wedding there are some people where their photographer is not staying until the end of the night. So they've done things like a mock exit for the end of the evening. So they've done something like where maybe at some point in the night where all the guests are gathered at the beginning of the reception and they do a mock exit. Some people don't like the idea of this, gathering all the guests at a random point in the evening to go outside and do a mock exit. They think it's stupid. But if you really want pictures of an exit style thing and your photographer is not staying until the end of the night, then absolutely do it. Who cares if some guests think it's stupid? Do what you wanna do, get your pictures of that mock exit, have fun with it, then you've got it captured. That way you don't have to pay your photographer to stay till the end of the night if you don't have the budget for it. So you can do something like that, do a mock exit. I have done one of those before. It's been many years. Um, to be honest, I usually do not stay until the end of the night for my uh, couples I very rarely do maybe once every couple of years so I don't get a lot of requests for um, grand exit photos from my couples I don't even know if they do them to be honest I really don't know um, I don't look at the end of the night timeline because I'm not the one who's staying there till the end of the 
night. So I don't really care what's happening because I'm already gone by that point of the night. So I don't really know what goes on, um, but you can definitely do an exit even if it's not being photographed because it's still something fun for you to do. But that's pretty much it. That's everything to do with grand entrances and grand exits. So if you guys have any questions about this down below, please do feel free to leave them in the comments and I will see you guys next time. Bye.